Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so the past couple lessons I've been telling you guys about the logistic growth model, which is this model for uh, for modeling populations that um, grow at almost an exponential rate, but the growth slows down um, as they approach a carrying capacity. And then when they hit the carrying capacity, um, it the growth actually uh, comes to a stop. Um, so we talked about this model and then we, we did the uh, deterministic simulation of it. So I was thinking it'll also be good um, to walk you guys through how to uh, do a stochastic simulation of this model just to get more practice with the um, with the uh, Gillespie algorithm. So with this video, I'm going to be assuming that you guys have already seen my previous videos on the Gillespie algorithm, but if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description to those. Um, so if you want to get like a, a beginner's introduction to it. But this video, I'm going to be assuming you guys already kind of know the basics of uh, of how to do a Gillespie um, simulation. And this video will be kind of just like more practice, like walking you guys through how to uh, implement it for uh, for the logistic growth model. Um, okay, so just to review, so this is our this is the uh, ODE version of the logistic model here. So we have some um, growth parameter R, and then X is the number of cells, or it could be the number of whatever is in the population we're interested in. It could be like number of animals or number of people. But for our purposes here, we're talking about a cell population. So X is the uh, number of cells. And then K is the um, carrying capacity. So it starts out at, um, so we said before that if we if we only had R times X and forget about all of this, this term here, if it was only R times X, then this ODE would be um, an exponential growth model. Uh, but we said that the growth is gonna slow down as the population approaches a carrying capacity. So that's why we have this term here, which one minus um, X over K, this whole term will become a smaller and smaller fraction as X gets uh, closer to K, meaning as the population gets um, closer to the carrying capacity. So as, uh, as we get closer and closer to the carrying capacity, the, um, the whole growth rate will um, slow down and then eventually stop because you can see that when we have x equals k, that's actually a steady state because then we'll be getting 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then 0 times r times x. So the whole thing will be 0. So that'll be um, a steady state, which we said is when the derivative is uh, equal, equal 0. And so this is how we're going to be um, sort of translating this into the uh, Gillespie algorithm. So again, so if you guys don't, if you guys don't understand what um, this table means, I'm going to actually refer you to um, my previous video on the Gillespie algorithm. But assuming that you already know some of the basics uh, by this point, so we're going to have two events that can happen. We can have the event where um, where a cell uh, divides, um, which means that one more cell is being added to the, the population. So that's this here, x going to x plus 1. And that's happening with the rate r times x. And then we also have the, the event of a cell death, which is what's going to happen when x goes to uh, x minus 1. And to get this rate here, um, so I should mention we're, we're multiplying this out. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're multiplying this thing out. So we're going to actually have um, rx times 1 uh, minus rx times x over k. So when we multiply this out to get the minus term, this thing here is just r uh, rx uh, times x over k. So it's rx squared over k. So we just get that, we're getting both of these by just multiplying this across here, distributing it across uh, across this term. Um, okay, so this table, uh, like we've been saying in the previous, uh, previous Gillespie videos, this here is all the information we need to do the um, Gillespie simulation. So let's get, let's get started with uh, the code now. So we start out like usual, just uh, importing the libraries we're going to use. So we have NumPy, SNP, uh, matplotlib. Um, I need this line just to make it work with the new Mac OS. And then we're going to be using um, the random library. Uh, oh yeah, we're actually, uh, yeah, for now we actually don't need this, but put it back in later maybe. So then um, I'm going to be going through this a little bit fast because like I said, I'm assuming you guys have already seen the other uh, my other videos on the Gillespie algorithm. So this will hopefully be kind of a, a review and like extra practice. But if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, slower and more in-depth videos on it. But so like usual, we're going to start out just by defining an array where we're going to be um, storing our values of X at each time point. 
So we're going to start off with, with the initial condition being uh, being one, start, start off with one cell. Because if we start off with zero cells, then we just it'll just uh, stay at zero. So we have to start off with one. And then, so as we, as we um, run the simulation and update the value of x at, at different time points, this is going to be getting updated with new values. Um, so at each time point, um, we're going to be updating, yeah, updating the value of x and then just appending the new value to this right here. So it'll, just be, uh, it'll, get, it'll get sort of filled up like this over time. What do you guys will see? And then we need our um, time point array. So we're going to start off at time zero. And then uh, just the same as with the uh, X array, we're going to be appending the updated time point at each time point. So, you know, just kind of appending to it as we go, as we uh, update. And then our time for TN, we'll run it until um, yeah, 400. But like I usually say, like I encourage you guys to play around with different uh, different parameters like end time and stuff like that. And then we'll have R, uh, the growth parameter, be uh, 0.05. And K, the carrying capacity, will be 100 for now. But yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's good practice for you guys to like play around with different parameters too. But just keep it like this for now to uh, keep it pretty simple. And then so now, like we've been doing with previous, like my previous videos on the Gillespie simulation, um, we're going to be running all of this in a while loop. So we're going to say while um, t index negative one. This is saying the last value in the t array. Because remember, we're going to be updating to this. So at every iteration through the while loop, this once the t array gets more filled up, we're going to be wanting to look at the most recent time point. And we're going to say, while the most recent time point we have recorded is less than t end, we're going to do um, what's in this while loop. So we're going to say uh, current x equals x uh, index negative 1, the most recent value in the uh, x array. That's saying there, last value in the x array. And then um, we're going to make our, uh, our array of rates. So... The first rate is r times x, or no, sorry, r times current x. And then the next rate is r times uh, current x squared over k, right? Yep. Okay. And then, like usual, we make our um, rate sum. By summing up uh, some of the uh, rates array, and then so next we need to um, choose our next time point. So like we've been doing in the previous videos, we do this with a random draw from an exponential distribution. So we're going to say tau equals np dot random dot exponential. Um, the scale being one over. Uh, rate sum and again i'm sort of like again I'm, I'm hoping this will kind of be like review and more practice for you guys but if you want an expl like more explanation on this line here um i'm going to re refer you to my uh, previous uh my previous like introductory video on the gillespie algorithm uh, but yeah so this is just choosing the the next time point is going to be the current time point plus tau and we're choosing tau randomly from an exponential distribution so um then we're going to append to the t array um, like I said, so the latest time point um, plus uh, tau is going to be, uh, yeah, so we have our t to the, uh, yeah, so t, um, the negative one index of t is our uh, last time point. So then the new time point is going to be our last time point plus this random number tau that we just, uh, we just chose. And then, so now we're going to choose another random number to choose um, which which event's going to happen. Because remember, at each time point, we're choosing the time points when an event is going to happen. But after we choose the time point, we need to choose actually which event that will be. So we're going to say rand equals random dot uniform uh, zero to one, just to draw a draw from our uniform distribution from zero to one. So some random decimal in there. And then we're going to say um, 
if rand um, times rate sum is less than or equal to rates, uh, first element of the rates array, then, so basically if this is true, then we're going to choose the uh, first event here to happen. And then if this is false, then we're going to be choos choosing the second event. So basically what we're doing is we're just, we're just taking, um, we're taking a random draw of these events, but weighting their probabilities appropriately based on their rates. So, so it's like the, the probability of the event being this event here, the, the production event, this will be um, R times X over the sum of both probabilities. And then the uh, probability of um, the second event here, the uh, cell death event, will be R X squared over K over the sum of both of these uh, probabilities. So we're just taking a random draw, but we're weighting the probabilities appropriately um, based on the current uh, the current values of the rates. Um, so yeah, so if this if this uh, if statement is true, we're gonna say x dot append um, the last value of x uh, plus one because this is for the uh, production event, and then we're gonna say else. Um, x dot append x to the uh, negative one index minus one because remember we, we only have two possible um, events that can be happening here so if it, so if it's not the first event then we know it must be the second event and then if it's the production event we we just um, update x to be one plus the last value of x and if it's the uh, cell death event we update x to be um, to be one less than uh, the current value of x. Um, okay, so this is actually all we need to do for uh, to do the uh, stochastic simulation. So as this runs, it'll it'll basically be choosing um, at each time point. It'll it'll choose the uh, time point of the next event and also choose which event that will be. And both of these choices will be uh, random choices. So that would, that's what makes it uh, stochastic. Um, but yeah, so now we can uh, plot the results. So we can uh, say plt.plot uh, our time points and then x. Um, yeah, so let's put some labels in there too. plt.x label uh, time, plt.y label cells. And then plt dot show. Um, okay, so hopefully this worked, and let's uh, give it a try. Yeah, so it's, I mean, basically, basically doing what we um, wanted to do. So, like we said, um, we made the carrying capacity hundred. So, what we would expect it to do is uh, start off with like almost exponential growth, and then the growth sort of slows down until it gets around the carrying capacity. And then it's since this is um, stochastic, it doesn't actually stay exactly at the carrying capacity but kind of like fluctuates around it and actually run it again just to show you guys how we get if we run it a couple times we get different results each time but they're all kind of the same idea so yeah see i mean if, after ran again it's like a little bit different but it's kind of the same general pattern and then i was also thinking another good thing to do for this video will be to actually show you guys how to do um a sanity check a sanity check for the uh, gillespie algorithm which is to um, plot the Gillespie results alongside the, the uh, deterministic results to make sure that they match up. So I'll show you guys how to do that too. So for this, I'm just gonna actually be just copying and pasting in um, our code from my last video uh, where we did the uh, ODE simulation of the um, logistic growth model. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this in, but um, if you guys want an explanation on how to actually write this code, um, can check out my uh, previous video on uh, the ODE simulation. But yeah, for now, I'll just uh, copy and paste it in. Yeah, so this is the code from the last video. So this will be, um, this is gonna be using the same, uh, it's gonna use the same parameters, because I actually comment out the uh, previous video's parameters. But yeah, same parameters, same R and K. So we're gonna see um, if this hopefully, hopefully will we'll match up to, um, or approximately match up to uh, the results from our uh, Gillespie simulation. So let's uh, see what happens. 
Yeah, so I mean, you guys can kind of see how um, you can see that there's clearly a difference between the deterministic simulation, which is the smooth line here, and the uh, stochastic simulation. But you can see that, like, kind of the general trend, like the general pattern, is kind of uh, kind of pretty similar. And I'll run it again just to show you guys how you know we can run it a couple times, get different results, but they're all going to be um, they're all going to be kind of similar. So yeah, so this is like a good sanity check for if, for example, if you don't know if you're doing the Gillespie simulation right, just plot your Gillespie results um, alongside. Um, alongside the deterministic results using the same parameters and it should match up like pretty closely um although yeah i mean of course if you run it you know keep running it a couple times you get different results every time but uh it should be kind of uh it should at least be recognizable you know what i mean you should be able to see that it's sort of following the same general pattern um, okay, so that's it for this video. So if you guys have any questions, you can just uh, leave them in the comments. And like usual, my code will be um, up on GitHub if you want to download it. Um, and I think in the in the next couple of videos, I'm hoping to get into like some more advanced topics uh, using some of these, uh, like the logistic growth model and the predator prey model. I want to use these as examples to look at like more advanced topics, like uh, maybe some um, like stability analysis or like sensitivity analysis or uh, you know, possibly some stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, see you next time.